this is the uh, new main menu we basically uh, kind of color coded things by what they uh, do so your reds are uh, basically your setup type things where you uh, do settings uh, in the background that are uh, used from time to time uh, up here at the uh, top you got your uh, light blue shaded and that's your order estimates and quantity pricing your catalogs are right here in the green uh, the black uh, with blue in the middle uh, are buttons that take you uh, out to the web and then we have the review schedules which we'll go over here shortly the other thing to notice on the menu is the area here in white this is actually reading uh, some information from the web and it's where we send you uh, notice information and uh, things that uh, we feel are pertinent information so kind of keep an eye on that uh, it changes every time if, if there's a change and you start it up, it'll, it'll uh, show the new change. You can also right click on there and do a refresh and it will load uh, whatever the most current uh, news is out on the web. One of the changes that we made in uh, 5.16 is the garment catalog. So we're going to go over here to the garment catalog. The way that the uh, catalog handles images that it displays here and these images are also used on uh, uh, the quantity pricing uh, when you print it out uh, or save it to a PDF uh, it now pulls the images from a directory on the computer uh, on your computer if you haven't already installed uh, the uh, Sandmar images and things uh, there's a button right here which will take you out to the documentation on how to uh, go to Sandmar, uh, get all the images in a file, bring it in, and uh, put it on your computer so that it will uh, pick it up here in the catalog. So there's no, you, no way you can click on this anymore and add the image here. The image has to be stored uh, on the uh, PC and it will always have to be a JPEG and you know the file name will needs to match the style number and the location uh, in here which is explained once you go here the location will be uh, where it needs to be for the vendor uh, that it goes to I'm gonna exit out of that the uh, next thing is when we go to the order estimates and I've already got it kind of open down here <coughs> excuse me you're going to see that we now have a scheduling tab and when we bring this up we can do the scheduling now you'll see some numbers in here yours will probably be blank because uh, you haven't done anything this is showing kind of what I've been playing with in here getting ready to, to demo this to you but basically when you schedule something it adds it uh, to a schedule and you can also build a, a iCal ICS file uh, and then that file can be imported into uh, any uh, uh, it should be able to be imported into anything that can use uh, or import an ICS file uh, like Google calendars and uh, uh, zoo calendars uh, so when you go through you can build your uh, scheduling or schedule the jobs once the customer has approved it and you kind of figure out uh, when you're going to uh, do it you can schedule the jobs now one of the things is I'm going to go ahead and reset this one because I want you to see this when you first come in uh, and you haven't scheduled anything naturally all these fields down here will be blank and this up here will be blank but you're going to mainly notice that it has not been exported to an ICS file and that tells you uh, you know basically nothing's been done to it now uh, I'm going to go ahead and point out that you cannot schedule quotes they have to be invoices so one of the things that we're going to do is we can optionally put a uh, uh, name in here uh, if you have a job name it will it will pull that down when you build the file uh, when you hit this add to schedule 
Uh, at minimum, if you don't put anything in here uh, and you don't have anything in the job name, it pulls the invoice number down because this is what you're going to see on your calendar. Uh, you're going to want to click at minimum a start time and when you pull this up you're going to notice that you have a calendar and you have a clock. You'll have to physically select the day. You've got to actually click on it. So even it brings it up if it's blank up here, go ahead and click on the day. This is set for the first. Well, let's just say we're going to schedule this for the third now. So we've gone this to the third and we got it at 12 p.m. Uh, which will be, uh, you know, uh, noon uh, is when we've got it scheduled uh, to start. So we're going to click on that. Uh, we're now going to change this one to the third also just so that we have that. And in the notify, we have the notify is, I'm telling it I want to be notified 45 minutes before uh, this is scheduled to start and to notify me by pop-up. If I go in the notify, I can actually go down and select what I want and I can do this in email. Uh, location or equipment will actually show up on the where in the calendar. So you can either put like in the shop or you can actually name a piece of equipment like the manual press, the auto, or whatever you want. Uh, priority doesn't really do much on Google calendars or uh, Zoo calendars yet, but it is here. And you can select from 1 to 10 if you want to. Like I said, it doesn't really do anything. And then the class is public, private, and confidential. It's going to default to public. What that basically means is if you're sharing your calendar with uh, other people, if it's public, they'll see the schedule. Uh, if it's private, they won't. So we're going to go ahead right now, and we're going to go ahead and add this to the schedule. And the minute we do that, you'll see the reset export flags comes up. And you'll also notice that this is starting will be included in the next ICS file. Uh, we haven't built an ICS file yet, so we're going to do that right now. We're going to click the build the ICS file. It's asking for a name. And it's going to default to a file name default. Now, if you already have a file name named that, it is going to totally overwrite it. Normally, this is not going to be a problem unless you schedule something and then you decide you're going to add something to the schedule and then you try to do it again. What's going to happen is you're going to wipe out uh, your uh, uh, schedule information if it's already been uh, sent out and uh, so just be mindful of that if you're building uh, multiple schedule files and I want to point out too that uh, when you click this build ICS file it can be done from within inside any invoice it doesn't make a difference so if you've got 15 jobs that you set up schedules for and they have not been exported when you click that build ICS file it's going to go through uh, the data it's going to find those 15 schedules and it's going to add them to the file and it's going to mark them that they have already been exported to the file so that it won't export them again so anyway uh, we're going to go ahead and leave this as default and we're going to we're going to build the file now you'll notice that it says it has been exported to the ISIS file uh, we could add comments in here if we wanted to, and those will show up in, in another uh, area on the, cal uh, the calendar. So, we basically, like I said, we've got, uh, we've gone over how to uh, schedule. There's another place that you can go in here now that we've got our schedule. We can review schedules, and you'll notice that we only have two invoices in here on the demo, and naturally, uh, this one had a job name, so it picked it up, and uh, we can look at these, and and we can see that uh, uh, you know we get our invoice dates, our invoice numbers, our job names. It's flagged for export. That the flag for export means that you had clicked the blue button over there on the uh, invoice to build uh, to add it to uh, 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 the scheduling to flag it to be added to the scheduling. So that's what that uh, means. Uh, we also uh, have here exported uh, to file and uh, if we click on these now you'll see that green bouncing up and down but basically as you get more and more in these 
it just disappears on the one that you're highlighted on. So it's saying that both of these are uh, exported uh, to the file and it shows us our scheduled dates. We can select any one of these and edit it. So if we want to do that, we want to edit selected, we can come into here and we could edit uh, the deal. Uh, if we wanted to do that, we'd want to reset the export flags and then edit it and then add to schedule and all that kind of stuff. There again, when you go to build that ICS file, if you have not uploaded uh, the other ICS file to your calendar and you don't give the file a new name, it is going to overwrite it and you're gonna lose whatever you scheduled that has not been sent to a calendar yet. So we're going to go back to schedules. Uh, the other things you can do, and there's no sense in me going through it here, but uh, and actually showing you with only two, but uh, if you get a lot of stuff in here, when you first come into the screen, it's going to list every invoice. And, but we can come in here and actually do things like, uh, I want to look, uh, I want to find uh, all the invoices with a range of scheduled dates. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick a uh, beginning date and end date and uh, then I want all the ones that have been flagged and not exported once I do that I would apply the search and it will then list all those in here so this is basically what you can do uh, you know from from this screen here next we'll kind of go over uh, the uh, actual pulling file to a calendar Okay, now we're actually going to import that uh, ICS file that we created in T5 and have it apply to the schedules. Now, this is Zoo Calendar. Uh, like I said, you can do the same thing with Google Calendar. I just find Zoo Calendar a little easier uh, to deal with about finding out where stuff is. So, uh, what we need to do to import in Zoo Calendar, and you'll, if you're doing it in Google, it's sort of the same. You just have to do that but anyway we go to settings in zoo calendar we go to import and we choose a file and uh, naturally I've got a ton of stuff here so uh, let me get down here to T5 and schedules and there's the uh, ICS file that I have done and I'm gonna go ahead and import now it tells me that two were imported and actually imported were done. What you're going to need to do a lot of times, uh, or sometimes, uh, is if you mod if you've already imported one, and then you modified it to, to uh, change it instead of just coming in the calendar and changing it, uh, you want to uh, select the more options and uh, tell it to overwrite events uh, organized by me. So if you uh, if you've made a change and it doesn't uh, show us uh, uh, the count being right for actually imported then we uh, that's where's your problem uh, so we go back to the calendar now we had two but you got to remember I didn't change the dates on the other one so that last one I did was uh, right here it's scheduled if I uh, click on it I can come in here and I can uh, uh, view whatever information I had I didn't have a description whatever I didn't put a location and I didn't give it a title, so it just gave it the title of uh, the invoice number 10,000 uh, 1003. The other one that uh, I believe we had was scheduled back over here, and uh, the week, uh, or actually this week sometime, and it's going to be one of these right in here. Here's here it is the ACOMS, and so we view the ACOMS. Uh, we come in here again. We didn't put any location or description, but you'll see it's got a 7 and then the 603D A composite. So it adds that invoice number in front of it. And uh, basically, it works the same way on uh, uh, Google, very similar on Google, and it should work that way on some other stuff. So, one last thing I want to go over. You'll notice uh, in the uh, screens that it has a kind of like a money background and this image uh, is uh, located in your C drive SCS directory and it is an image called uh, BG uh, image I believe uh, 
Let me let me take a look at that. Uh, double check that real quick. Uh, it's BG underscore image dot JPEG, and it will tile it in. So it's not the full size of this. So if you don't want the money and you want a solid color or white, just replace that image with whatever you want, and it's going to automatically start picking it up as you go through and open these screens back up. Uh, and uh, it will change those for you. So, like I said, we uh, we do we had that. And if we come back in here now, we're going to see that uh, because we did export the file, it's showing that they were they were both flagged for export, and they were both already exported to the file. And uh, so there we have it, uh, basically uh, in a nutshell, without getting into a ton more detail. Uh, this has uh, been an overview for. T5 version 5.16.